Hello again. Choose. Choose a random rare relic to start. Always a very tempting start. A lot of characters that can really benefit from that. Especially when you're fighting Slime Boss, because there are more rare relics that are good against Slime Boss than there are rare relics good against the other bosses. Let's do it. Ice Cream. Energy is conserved between turns is our starting relic. There is definitely some utility to this. Some very interesting utility to this. If we choose not to play all of our cards, we might be able to store some energy for a future turn. And that could pan out very well indeed. Although it's very often incorrect to save any energy during the early game turns. There's a lot of cards we can find that can make energy. Or utilize stored energy. X cost cards like Skewer. Cards like Concentrate or outmaneuver become a lot better. Here's our first opportunity to actually meaningfully save. Of course, we don't actually get to spend the energy we saved, and that's often the case with ice cream. Save energy and you end up winning the fight without ever using it. If you find yourself ending the combat with 10 or more stored energy, it's a sign you're building the deck wrong from the very get-go. Man, what a choice of uh, first three cards, holy heck. I don't think I could point to three better cards for picking an early game direction and just getting some early value on uh, Silent. Dang. On floor one, I have to say Terror is almost assuredly the best of these, but all three of these are Silent staples in their own way. They're incredible. Terror has an energy upgrade, which is going to matter a lot more with the ice cream, too. So all the more reason to upgrade Terror immediately. Normally it's a problem if you draw upgraded Terror and then just like... Two more energy of cards you can play, but... That won't be a problem with Ice Cream. Not at all. In fact, knowing that we have Terror, we now know it's correct to bank energy... Until the enemy is actually vulnerable. So let's save there on turn one. Don't spend one damage to deal six when later on it's one energy, sorry, uh, one energy for deal six rather than one energy now for deal nine. It's better. That said, we would have gotten a kill if I'd done it. So actually we hosed ourselves there. Total misplay on several fronts. I got tricked by the ice cream and that's why ice cream is terrible. Actually secretly not nearly as good as you think it is. I hate that I'm going to take this, but we're doing it. Infinite Blades versus Slime Boss, actually pretty decent. We'll lose some health to uh, the max health, that is, to get the Golden Idol, a money multiplier for the run. Excellent. Ex excellent. Slander. I, 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 I think terrible is uh, maybe not the right word for it, but Ice Cream doesn't provide immediate... Uh -huh numeric impacts of any kind. Gives you the opportunity to make some, some different plays, but it, it doesn't produce any block nor deal any damage. And that is an issue compared to many other relics that do. Okay, turn one infinite blades against Grumlin Ob. We might be able to make this work. I think we can make this work. Okay, this is still fine. Sixteen, sixteen. Bring more draws. Hmm. I should play one defend. I'm going to need the energy. Good enough. Easy. Look at this damage output. Oh, actually. Oh yeah, we're fine. Easy. 
Hey, and we get another calculated gamble offered to us. Or a backstab. Gamble, please. Upgraded gamble? A little bit worried about this note now. Hmm. Would I recommend a playthrough of Curse of the Dead Gods? Yes, I like Curse of the Dead Gods a, a fair amount. Felt to me a pretty good action roguelike, with, uh, similar to Hades, um, with the curse system making each run feel different. The enemy design was to me a little repetitive, and the boss fights is expect you to learn how to parry and learn it well if you want to succeed. So... Uh, I guess that bit of advice going in. Learn how to parry, because you have to, if you want to get further. The Curse of the Dead Gods folks are actually releasing a new game pretty soon. What's the title of this one? Hold on, I've got this in my Discord here. Raven's Watch. Uh, another attempt at a top-down roguelike action game from the, the same developers, and I'm really curious to see how that turns out. Is the only way to master Survivor by duplicating it? Yes. The only way. All right, I'll upgrade the Calc Gamble, but I'm not, not sure that that's correct. Not sure we can actually fight elites here. Let's see, sentries could be trouble. Like though the uh, Dexterity Potion makes it not too bad. Happy Flower is definitely an improvement here. And actually, Legavolin with ice cream is really easy. Sure, let's do it. I think we might, uh, we might perish here, but we'll see. We shall see. And then, yeah, I guess we'll awaken it next turn. I was worried about that. Well, heck. Thank goodness for calculated gamble, eh? And we have 12 energy banked. BT dubs. Easy. Should have played that last. Definitely. Maybe wanted to consider the next potion too. Going a little too quick here. Let's slow down for a moment. Okay, this turn's straightforward. We play all four cards. All four defends, rather. The strike and the shiv. Still have lots of energy banked to keep up the offense. These shivs aren't gonna do very much soon. So we need to make sure we don't skip any more strike plays. Or else. Our attacks are doing a lot less now, so we have to put a, a pretty swift end to this. Again, I, I don't think we can get away with a Calc Gamble here. I think we just need to play every single attack with that we draw. So I'm okay taking a bunch this turn. Next turn we should be okay. Oh, so close. 11 more. Okay, I'm fine resting into that next fight. Certainly would have been a good fight for the Dexterity Potion. Envenom, Dagger Spray, Piercing Whale. Envenom is interesting here, but I think with the threat of Gremlin Knob coming up, we really have to take Dagger Spray. This will also help against the three sentries. Very happy with a fairy in a bottle, as that can save us against Gremlin Knob when basically nothing else can. Cool. 
That also means we can upgrade the dagger spray at the rest site. Remisphere, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Please be sentries. Thank you. Okay. Then this becomes the fight for the dexterity potion. Definitely this one. Hey, Dagger Spray turn one is nice. Unfortunately, Terror's not doing anything here. We could just use it now to get rid of it, or we can try to neutralize something and then redraw the Terror and use the Terror there. But, kind of iffy. Let's just throw it away. Block for five or strike. Definitely a fight we have to remove one from play ASAP here. So I think we should play the strike while we have it. Ultimately all about the damage. Okay, I'm okay with these next two turns. Getting infinite blades on turn three is not my ideal, but it's acceptable here. And we should be able to kill the back sentry before it hits us again. I'm still concerned we might need to use the fairy here. It's only going to take one bad draw to do us in. Ooh, that's one good draw. So we have to play Infinite Blade, Strike, Strike to guarantee that this sentry dies next turn. Which means we take two more. Okay. Hey. Now we draw Dagger Spray. Chunk everybody for some more damage. Maybe we can kill the middle one next turn if we're lucky. Any attack draw will do it, but there's only... Th actually, has to draw one of the two strikes. Pretty unlikely, unfortunately. Odds are not looking good here. Odds look better if we just calculated Yamble everything, including the Shiv. So we're more likely to get blocks. Perfect. It kills this one. Next turn, we guarantee draw a full block. I think we've made it, Twitch chat. Looks like we have. Excellent. I can even guaranteed wait one turn, because we guaranteed get a 4 damage shiv next turn. So set Happy Flower to 2. Meaning we get energy on the first turn of the next fight. We also get a meal ticket, healing us should we enter a store. Hmm. Healing us if we go to a store. Seems good to me. The Strength Potion is also, I think, basically all we're going to need to get through uh, Slime Boss. If we if we play the fight right, we might even be able to keep the Fairy in a Bottle. Plus, we've got a, a store to spend money at here. Does Fairy heal more with Toy Ornithopter? No, actually. The potion is never used. Oddly enough, the wording specifies that you discard it rather than use it. We could also use the fairy to heal to 30% instead of taking the big hit, if we wanted to. But we could still lose after that point, is the the concern there. Ubla says, we found a glitch that lets us use it. Amazing. Amazing. Is it buffed by Magic Flower? Yes. Do we want this all at attack? Probably. I'm going to go with probably. I was thinking... I was Considering strongly between backflip and all that attack there, we really need the damage as much as I'd like the draw. There's some draw. Or there's the second infinite blades. Am I going to pay 85 for another infinite blades? Probably not. Not when Bag of Preparation is here. Entropic Brew is also looking really good with uh, Toy Ornithopter. Actually, this is kind of huge. Because not only is this four random potions, it's 25 hit points in five hit point increments with Toy Ornithopter. Five when you use the potion, and then five more from each of the four resultant potions. 
That's assuming I lose the fairy in a bottle first, which is easy to set up against Slime Boss. We just talked about it. We can guaranteed lose the fairy here. Ah. Unfortunately, we can't afford to remove alongside that, which is pretty sad. But it sets us up really nicely for Act 2, which I like. Let's try it. Also, now we can buy Out Maneuver with Ice Cream. So, let's do that too. And I will upgrade Out Maneuver. Apparently. So, we start with that for sure. We're going to try to lose Fairy in a Bottle. I think that's doable. Very doable. Yeah, pretty bad split if we split here. So let's just go Terror, Outmaneuver, play the Shiv, and end our turn. Slime Crush. And die. This is a good turn to split. You really don't want to let Slime Boss add five more slimes. Let's just gamble here. Okay. Bit iffy. If we need to, we can drink the Entropic Brew. Doesn't look like we need to. Half health for them is 22. Get the one that makes us frail first. They both go for 18, but we have 19 health, so this is okay. Theoretically. And there's actually zero slimes in the deck now. Neat. Yeah, let's just uh, let this happen. If we need to drink the potion, we'll drink it. But currently, I don't feel like we do. Starting to feel like we might need to. Math says we don't. No longer weakened. This would have been a really good time to draw a dagger spray. Uh, now it looks like we need to drink the potion. So we have not managed to kill. Or draw dagger spray. All right, what do you got? Attack potions probably our easiest solve here. We have what? Twelve block. Uh, Essence of steel would also do it. I guess I'd rather use the essence of steel. Keep the poison pot, attack pot, and speed pot. Actually, no. Speed potion is probably the best one here. Speed potion can be hard to use. Maybe not for this deck. Hmm. Alright, Essence of Steel it is.
Good work. Bested slime boss, and we have most of our potion resource preserved. We're offered Phantasmal Killer, Storm of Steel, and Tools of the Trade. All three rares that we have not mastered. Tools feels particularly useful. Recycling through to the important stuff. Phantasmal Killer's a bit iffy. We don't quite have enough attack density to make it consistently useful. Unless we get a Runic Pyramid. Kylios, thanks for the tier one subscription in five months of support. Heck yeah. Hmm. Now, the Ornithopter is ultimately the whole reason we bought that Entropic Brew at the store. I'll take a tools here. Also, another card with an energy upgrade. And we're offered Sneko Eye Coffee Dripper Calling Bell. Hmm. Coffee Dripper seems pretty good. We have both Meal Ticket and Toy Ornithopter for healing. So the odds we need to rest are pretty low. Sneko Eye for more card draw could be good, but we have a few zero cost cards already. I really don't like it that much. Let's take the extra energy and look to add card draw to this deck. Acrobatics, more backflips, you name it. Hmm. How do we feel? Late elites are better than early elites. These two elites look pretty good. Which means this shop looks good. Yes, I like this path up the left here. Broadly speaking, rather than trying to fight either of these elites, which I really don't like, we'd have to go up this side, take on just one elite that way. We skip one of these. But these are an easy two elites, so two relics for sure. Definitely. But I take bites again in this situation. Uh, with the aforementioned means of healing, I don't think so. I would not tolerate a max health reduction when we already have ways to sustain ourselves. I say nay. Bit of a weird fight here with Terror not doing anything. Not much point in having it. Might prefer the immediate card draw though. This is almost certainly a fight that's going to require a potion out of us. I think the speed potion on the 11 by 2 turn, probably. Definitely need to play Dagger Spray every time we draw it. Quite frankly though, we don't have any real damage in this deck. We have a 12 damage attack and a 10 damage attack, but otherwise we cannot do damage quickly at all. It's not good. At least we get tools down turn one. I'll take it. Um, can't play both all of attack and survivor. So let's lose the all of attack. Next turn's going to be pretty bad. We're going to be frail. We draw pretty much nothing of merit at all. And trouble visits us. Let's see. How much damage do we actually have? 22. 32. So we're a full 30 damage short means not even Finisher would let us kill here. The speed Potion doesn't do much for us either, as we didn't draw any blocks. Bummer. There's a couple attacks that draw things. Uh, Quick Slash and Dagger Throw too. But there's nothing in the attack potion that can do enough damage to actually kill this thing. So I don't know why I would use it. How's it going, Lochnef? What a name, what a player. 
No, I think we just tank all this damage and then heal it back slowly. Yeah, Melter, if only. Definitely suffering a bit from a lack of relics that actually do anything numerically in the combats to help us out here. This bit looks a bit better. Hmm. Still not even quite a kill here. It'll get 15 more block for next turn. So next turn I could use a speed potion. Oof. It's hoping it'd be take a bunch of damage or use a potion, not both. Uh, we got what, 22 in hand? This would be eight short. There's a very vague chance we get a kill. Let's see what we can do here. So I have 20 health next turn. It's possible to draw into a kill, but very unlikely. Well, actually, we have infinite blades. Sure. Let's see what happens. Did not get the kill. So we use either the speed potion or the attack potion. And I'm saying speed potion. Very well. Um, these will block what? 10 goes to 8. No, 10 goes to 7. 7 each. So I'll take 1 if I don't discard a strike. Yeah, 7. Bummer. There's all the damage cards. Hello. Where were you last draw? All right, we're through what is a, a relatively nightmarish fight. When it comes for ways to improve your damage with a silent deck like this, Flechette's actually pretty spicy, dealing damage based on the number of skills in our hand. Uh, as we add more card draw, that's going to get even better. So yes, actually, I will take that. Um, how much damage do we have in this hand? This will be 12 before or after vulnerable. This is 18. So that's 30. All right, that means we can kill the front one. We cannot kill the back one. Usually I like to kill the back one here. We have uh, 48 damage, accounting for the strikes. Normally I like to target the back one, but in, in this case where the five hit point difference is actually mattering a lot, I'd say it's far more important to target the one I can kill versus the one I can't. Deal with the consequences later, dang it. You just Gamba looking for outman over here, or no, we need the powers in play. If we want any chance of killing this nerd before he runs away with our money, we need both of these powers in play. Actually rather happy he chose to attack us. Don't think we need outman over. We can easily block this nerd, and that means we have one more turn to do enough damage to kill him without losing our money. Looks like we would have got him either way, I think. Killing the back one is preferable because the back one does more damage on turn three of the combat if they choose to attack you. Uh, they're also harder to kill if they start blocking. Wow, that is a lucky card draw find. All right, let's take events. The combats are horrifying. Events are also horrifying. This one's not too bad, I guess. Actually, the golden idol thing would be great because we have the golden idol. So let's maybe find another way to heal. Oh dear. Well, this is not a fight that often donks you for a million on turn one, but it sure does sometimes, and uh, today is one of those days. Health getting real critical. Can't say that I love that part. 
I am going to bank two energy here. We've already done enough damage that the Mystic will heal next turn. Uh, our priority is getting... Getting powers and stuff in play now. Hmm. Also not getting donked for more. Is also a priority. Help! Alright, I see we're going to get bonked. I think that's the preferable choice. Um, better to play flechettes before backflip. Keep him the draw pile. Defend, defend, outmaneuver, infinite blades, all attack. Huzzah! From there, I want. So close. And yet so far. Uh, these won't do anything. Okay, no more terror. Can dish out some pretty serious damage here. Ami, thank you so much for 22 months. Knew something was wrong. You weren't sub to me. Well, thanks for fixing that. How much damage do you have to do to guarantee a heal? On Ascension 20, you have to deal 21 damage. Not 20 exactly, but 21 or more um, to both of them. Totaled. So you could do 11 to one and 10 to the other, or 20 to one and one to the other, but it has to be 21 or more combined damage to guarantee a heal on turn two. Hey, Leg Sweep, there's a block card worth blocking with. Please. And as, uh, as asked before, uh, unfortunately, no, you do not get a heal when the fairy saves you with Toy Ornithopter, as you do not use the fairy in a bottle. It gets discarded according to its own tooltip, when it is activated. Bit odd. Long line of hooded figures offer us a ritual dagger. We have exactly enough health to be able to take the dagger here. Cute. That said, I think 50 gold going into a store is uh, what I want here. We could afford a waffle at the shop, for example, if we had 50 more gold. But currently, we're just shy of uh, a relic. 173 is the higher end for a commoner shop relic. So that, to me, says take 50 gold. Does the fairy save you from dying in an event? Yes. As does the lizard tail. Does work in events. You have two fairies at once, I think. The one on the right gets used, but I'm not sure whether it's left to right or right to left. It would just be based on... They'll activate one at a time in order of potion slots. Hmm. I think upgrading this flechette's is priority. Normally I'd want to rest here, but we have a fairy in a bottle, so... Also, I'm not allowed to rest, because I have a coffee dripper. All good reasons not to rest. Let's upgrade uh, flechette's. Oh Reflex. Very cheap reflex. So, so Enlightenment and Sneaky Strike, although I don't think those are quite it. Fire Potion looks good. Fire Potion looks very good. Oh. It's possible for a combination of things to happen to use two fairies in one 
action. Because it depends on what you mean by one action. During one enemy turn, certainly. At the same time? I don't think so. Hmm. Although... Even if there's a way to take damage twice from something happening, like attacking into a spiker while you have a pain in your hand, maybe. Ah. Or, or yeah, multi-hit on a, a spiker, actually. Even better, yeah. A sword boomerang against a very spiky spiker would allow you to chunk through all of your fairies in quick succession, but you lose one fairy per hit. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I'll buy a reflex. Seems pretty good with tools of the trade, right? Very protect you from blasphemy. Yes, it will keep you alive. It will. Block potion's also pretty tempting. I think fire potion's the better pick here. And let's take another event. Please be the thing. That's just a treasure chest. Not a tiny chest treasure chest. Our next question mark room will also be a treasure chest. So I guess the relics are happening. We get bottled lightning, meaning we can bottle any skill. Terror or calculated gamble both come to mind as really good things to bottle. If only we'd taken the bag of preparation, Bottle Gamble would be very, very good. I think we take the Bottle Gamble. And a Kunai. I mean, sure. Makes our infinite blades actually kind of not terrible. Almost. So here's an example of a situation where bottling calculated gamble feels pretty good. Because this is pretty bad otherwise. I'm gonna discard everything, including this one defend. Just gamble. For something else, please. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Nay, a lot better. Just defend Survivor, or do we dare acro here? Looks like we should acro, because there's a reflex in the draw pile, and it'll come guaranteed brick if I don't. Cool. Lachette's does 39 damage, but I really need to leg sweep. Or 36 damage. My numbers were upside down. This turn's also not the greatest, but is acceptable. Might want to consider the poison potion here for damage, actually. We're 50% chance to find a new potion, so it's five health. Let's do that. I think I should have used that earlier in this fight. Still pretty happy with the choice now. It'll do most of the damage over the next three turns. Um, we would like to play three attacks. Or kunai. So full block this turn. That can do some stuff. Dang. I like it. We do get a potion, a distilled chaos. 
And another backflip or an outmaneuver or a blade dance. Dang. Um, probably blade dance. Actually, we do need more damage. And with the kunai, this is also dexterity scaling uh, to the point where we could use it to beat champ. Feels important. Play dance to scale. True. Could this deck take in Venom? Yes. Should this deck take in Venom? Actually, also, yes. Yeah, this deck would like it in Venom. It's not the greatest, but it's pretty good. I am going to opt into the Elite Fight. I have no idea if that's correct. Don't really love my uh, opening hand here. Might want to use the Distilled Chaos right now. There's two unplayable cards, which is a bit iffy. But I'll do it. What do you got? Oh, those are good. Yes, backflip. Thank you. Good. So I think I'm going to go outmaneuver gamble, outmaneuver infinite blades gamble. I'm not going to play blade dance. Just out when you ever gamble. Yeah. So we can go acrobatics. Oh, what? Oh, man. <laughs> That's not it. Well, Flechette still does, like, a ton. So we're still playing it. And I think we want to play Survivor rather than Tools, but... Not 100% on that. Definitely can see how we want to upgrade the tools of the trade already. This turns a bit iffy. Nope, life's good. Sorry, Flechettes, not this time. There we go. And once we play the outmaneuver the first time, we'll always have the energy to play it the second time. That's good stuff. This is not good stuff, but what can you do? I didn't play the powers the first time, so it's going to be a hand where we draw them. Take eight more, and then that looks pretty good. Still weak next turn. Ideally, we're killing two turns from now, but I'm not 100% sure if that's actually happening. Um, full block and then kunai, because this discards at random. Might have to use the fire potion here. But then again, we might not. Also, we might be able to block. Let's keep the blocks. Since I drew neutralize, we're already mostly there. Easy. Lachette's does 45 damage. And we get an Ancient Tea Set, which is absolutely massive if for any deck with Ice Cream. After visiting a rest site, we have two additional energy on turn one of the next fight. That's our next Elite Fight and the Champ Fight. We just get two bonus energy for it. Second Blade Dance is here, or prepared. And Kunai says, take the second Blade Dance. That should be all the Blade Dances we need. We don't need more than two. Question is, can we survive this fight? Hmm. Worrisome. Very worrisome. Is an elite easier than an advanced hallway fight now? Well, this elite is probably going to be easier than this advanced hallway fight. That I can say with some confidence. I am currently concerned for our fairy in a bottle. Do I get one dex and then draw? Hmm. Having dex seems really important here. Actually, we should do it here. Draw now. Oh god. 
Welp, rip fairy in a bottle. Actually, I guess I'll just become vulnerable now. Sure, that's fine. Yeah, just, just all in. Hit me. What a brick. Glad we had that fairy. Damn. What a brutal way for that to go. This can't be our draw next turn either. Bummer. Yeah, we should do it this way. Another point of dexterity here. Okay, okay. So we don't take this, for example. We might want to consider Cloak and Dagger or maybe Reflex number two. I'm down for Reflex number two. But we really got to upgrade that uh, Tools to Trade. Immediately. Actually, not sure that's true with the Ancient Tea set for these two fights. I still say immediately. Kremlin leader. Okay. Definitely a good use for the fire potion here, turn one. Nuke one of these gremlins, who are otherwise going to make a problem for us. Certainly don't mind. Neutralize, strike, strike. Calc Gamble would draw. Hmm, I guess we really want to neutralize the grim leader, huh? Calcular Gamble will draw four. Nah, let's just do it this way. Actually, no, it draws five. And we immediately get leg sweep. So all is well. Everything is good. And nothing is bad. Perfect. Hmm. Let's do it this way. Do I hit leader here? Now we're not quite ready to DPS down the leader. Let's do it this way. Kill this one. Gamble. Works for me. I guess we can set up Happy Flower for Champ a little bit here. This probably won't matter much, but I don't have any reason not to do this. And a Lantern for even more energy on turn one. Normally this would be overkill. We get four additional energy on turn one. But Ice Cream says, hey, that's exactly what you want. Also, Alchemize with Toy Ornithopter Potion Belt, please. Which makes me want to consider upgrading our card draw even more. Just all the additional energy we got. Let's do it. It's like a better version of version of bandage up. It also gives us a potion. Pretty good potion too. I like it. Do we feel like we need a power potion for champ? No, because we can use the kunai to outscale champ with these blade dances. We can take our sweet time in this fight. Get them all at attack. 
The power. Oh, shoot. I wanted these cards. Oh, well, we got a few health to spare. I don't see any reason to use our potions needlessly here. We can keep these for Act 3. I think they'll be pretty useful there. Alright, now it's kunai time. Call that a weapon? Yes, a kunai is a weapon. Sure is a lot of block. That I can do. Once again, all out attack proves its reliability because I can just play every other card in the hand. That's kind of cool. I like it. We don't seem to be doing very much damage here. I guess it really doesn't matter. Because I have 11 dexterity. And a lot of banked energy. is the half health threshold. If possible, we'd like to line up the execute with the debuffs wearing off. Which is currently not now. Let's wait a minute here. Okay, going for strength buff. A reasonable choice, champ. vulnerable again. Can't say I love this. Can do pretty good flechette's damage, if nothing else, though. If I bring champ below half health on this turn, we'll be both vulnerable and frail for the execute turn. We could use the Flex Potion right now. That would absolutely slap pretty hard. Although I think it'll be better next turn when we're not weak. I think I'm just going to... Wait a moment. Heavy Slash. Okay. Now. Now we go. Now, when we bring Champ below half health, he'll switch to... Uh, buffing his strength next turn, and then when the execute occurs, all of our debuffs will be gone. Essentially found the gap in Champ's debuff rotation here. 
We're going to exploit it mercilessly now. Still not the turn I want to use the Flex Potion on. No longer even sure we need to use the Flex Potion. Let's just go wild here. I have 21 energy, by the way. So this would be the turn to use the Flex Potion. I think. If we feel like we need it. Let's see what we're drawing. Yeah, that's a pretty good Flex Potion turn. Let's just do that. Now, Champ is never guaranteed to buff, unfortunately, Bath Tube. We got lucky with his random pattern. But there's uh, there's never a forced strength buff from Champ other than the one when he goes below half health. Yeah, that was a pretty good flex potion. I don't necessarily think we needed it, but it made that fight much simpler. Nightmare. Actually, we haven't mastered Tools of the Trade, and this is definitely a deck that would actually like to be able to discard two cards at the beginning of the turn. As much as that Nightmare is very good with Alchemize, because we can duplicate Alchemize to make more potions to get more healing. It's very strong. Without Retain, though, it's a little difficult to actually line up. Two tools the trade I really like, and part of our challenge here, the mastery challenge, in order to win, to clear the not mastered tag from a card, we must win a run with two or more of that card. So two tools is what we need. It'll be a tutorial for getting this run going. Oh man, and Sacred Bark is here, but so is Pandora's box and Wristblade. Dang. So on one hand, double effectiveness potions. This is not twice as much healing from the Ornithopter, but it is good. It means we'll get two cards from these card potions each. Pandora's Box, transform all of our strikes and defends. I'd rate that pretty low at the moment. Our defends are quite good with the dexterity gain of the Kunai. Or Wrist Blade. All zero-cost attacks deal four more damage. That improves the base damage of Shivs from four to eight, which is a very substantial and going to be very helpful in getting us to be relevant in the fights that de deal damage quickly of Act 3 here. But I think Double Strength Potions are also going to be incredible. I'll take the Bark. Are unmastered relics marked in game? Yes, they'll have a red outline on them so that we can see them. Okay, we already have our green key. Three elites maximum this act. Merchants are placed a little weirdly. How many upgrades do I feel like I need? Quite a few. Reflex is good, Tools is good, Alchemize is good, the Blade Dance upgrades are good. Lots of good upgrades, which makes me think we should maybe look at uh, shops for Apotheosis or something. Hmm. This path looks reasonable. No Mind Bloom if we do that. We're actually only getting one event and it's guaranteed to be a treasure chest. Which is not bad. You get a lot of card rewards, which are quite nice. How does Barkway work with a fairy in a bottle? You'll get twice as much health when it happens. Hmm. Neat. Let's go. Out maneuver, defend, draw one. Stinky exploder. Pretty decent use case for an attack potion. Health is a precious resource. Yeah. 
do an alchemize, right? So I'm not actually going to play both of these. Got it. Smoke bomb. Not what I was looking for, but okay. Skewers here with the ice cream that can slap pretty dang hard. Does need an upgrade though. Or Piercing Whale can reduce strength of enemies for one turn. That's also pretty broadly useful. Um, time Eater would be pretty nice to solve with the ice crate with the uh, skewer. The lack of an upgrade really makes me not want it though. I'm gonna hope that we can find something else. I'll take the Piercing Whale. Gary Spaceman, thanks for the two hundo bits. Oh my, we've got a Dolly's Mirror here. Dolly's Mirror allows me to duplicate any card in this deck. Could have had Nightmare Nightmare Alchemize, just saying, Twitch chat. Is it time to mirror Survivor? It could be. That's actually not a bad choice. I think Flechette's is also a pretty good consideration here. I think Art of War is also pretty good here. That's another option, is that we don't even bother with the duplicate, and we could do some other stuff. But yes, Survivor is good, broadly speaking. This would be a great run to get double Survivor on. Anything else that we're really, really trying to master? Just the tools of the trade. Sure. Let's do it, Twitch chat. I like this suggestion. Also, a second Acrobatics Plus is also, like, a kind of a huge deal. Actually, yeah, actually, well... No, I got a Master Survivor somehow. Okay, let's try it. Give me a Relic. Gremlin Horn. I'm definitely going to take that. Very good for getting through Reptomancer. The challenge has been accepted. Part of the art of the mastery challenge. I've got to take card picks or decisions that are non-optimal in order to get everything that we need to master. Maybe we even lose this run because of that choice, and that's okay. That's the whole point. We would take a second Infinite Blades for the same reason. The point is to lose! The point is not to take a third Blade Dance. Uh-oh. Writhing Mass, hello. You're a bit of a tricky foe. So you have... Attacks that do a lot of damage, and you have attacks that curse, and both of them are problematic in their own right. Hmm. I'm okay with this. Could also just have smoke bombed out of this fight, but I, I I really do want a card reward, so won't be doing that either. Okay, that's a good intent for you. I like when you do that one. That one makes me think happy thoughts. This one fills me with anger and sadness. Good. 
Okay, hopefully we can actually start dexterity scaling now. The additional block per hit we make is uh, definitely a bit of a challenge factor here. We are undeterred. Should probably use one more potion this fight, huh? The Breathing Mass does not scale, which means taking taking your time in this fight can often be the correct choice. That's really the thing to take advantage of, is that the Breathing Mass does not scale. Lots of good abuse for that. Okay, we've lucked out enough. So am I using a potion here? I'd rather just guarantee to have four potions for the elite fight, even if I'm losing five health out over it. Still fine with that. Caw. Guess we're blocking this turn? Looks like it's... Next turn. Juice. Gain 10 max HP. Don't mind if I do. How about a third reflex? Yes. I'm gonna go with yes. Alright, lose that colorless potion. Giant Head is not Reptomancer, also thankfully. This seems like a fight that shouldn't be too hard. Nice double reflex draw. Draw 10. Easy. He's a prisoner. Silver, Alchemize, Tools, Blades. Bit, bit of bop. Okay. And you're not even done your countdown, you say. How convenient. I'll just keep drawing cards then. Three dexterity here. This might be a turn where I may need to consider the energy potion. Or an attack potion or something. Something to help. The current situation. I'm gonna play three shivs, then backflip. Bonus dexterity. Okay. Like sweep looks good. Probably want to play out maneuver. Definitely energy potion looks good here. Okay, I'll use the energy potion. I'm cool with that. Now we have tons of excess energy. And lots of card draw. Although not this turn, huh? Double kunai. Still full blocks, at least. I'll take it. Full block. Actually, we're gaining dexterity faster than the giant head is gaining damage. It's 
So it seems to me like we're winning this scaling war. Smells like victory. an egg will upgrade any powers that we find like second infinite blades which really just seems meant to be we need it for the mastery challenge and it powers the kunai i think the cloak and egger plus is also very good but only one of these cards counts for the challenge and it's this one let's do it it's also not yes yeah, not that bad with the bottled uh calculated gamble because we can discard it if we need immediate stuff the double infinite to infinity and beyond twitch chat so many good upgrades still I'm going to continue to get energy upgrades just to help us get uh, started faster in most fights sort of kind of regret that. Hmm. Not too bad, I suppose. Yeah, not too bad. Nothing we can't heal. Before playing more skills, Flechette's hits like a truck. Use this now. Little flying knee sounds good. Gentle Nemesis fight. Whenever you play 10 cards, draw one. That is a lot of card draw. That is a lot of card draw. And there's another upgraded Cloak and Dagger for us. Yes. Would Skewer be meaningful here? Skewer would mostly be meaningful for dealing with Time Eater. Currently, the deck struggles to actually kill Time Eater without giving Time Eater an enormous amount of strength. But Skewer would fix that and let us just skip phase two of that fight. Otherwise, no, I don't think we need it much. And since there's only a 50% chance we fight Time Eater in the first place, I'm not that motivated. There's other ways we can get that done. This fight's a bit awkward, but we're fine. Alright, 
I'll use the attack potion for kunai value. Double quick slash. Fifty-four damage. Lachance. I feel like we need a second out maneuver or something. We're actually kind of consistently running out of our running out of our energy, so we would still appreciate being able to generate more. More. I demand more. Prepared helps by just drawing and discarding through the deck to get us back to the one-out maneuver that we have. Choke is also actually pretty good at dealing a lot of damage here. Could be a way to help beat Time Eater. We've got three more card rewards and potion generation. Honestly, even just a strength potion beats Time Eater. I am not afeard of Tim. This will go Blades, Cloak, and Dagger. Transient's a bit of a weird fight. Need to have consistent output. Block, damage, something. To be able to deal with this foe. Potion could help a fair bit. I don't think we need one, though. Next turn looks bad. Alright, use this then. Fire potion here. Yeah. All right, now we should be set up enough that we don't need help. Let's see, though. Oh yeah, good enough. No longer need out maneuver. Nine times nine. The rare and incredible nine hit flechettes. That's the maximum possible. As there's. You have to have flechettes and nine other skills. Amazing. The perfect card. Alright, well, give me some dexterity, I guess. I don't actually know if I've ever done that before, by the way. I've played a lot of this game. I don't know if I've done that before. Hmm. Seems like a good enough hand. Yeah. Ten hits if you distilled chaos it. You're right. Yes, if, if you play a distilled chaos that's not in your hand, you can make it 10x. I hadn't thought about that. Very clever. Yeah, currently the, the the current broadcast is unavailable on the VODs channel until I publish it after the show. 
Uh, I do not know how to solve this at the moment. I'm, I'm currently waiting on a reply from partner help, but not 100% sure what is going on. So, try to master flechettes or take accuracy plus and beat time eater. Although flechettes could actually maybe also beat time eater, quite frankly. But I think we should take accuracy here. And get some upgrading to do. And by upgrading, I mean recalling. Writhing Mass, we meet again. Can't say I'm happy about it. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Here, do something else. Perfect. Sorry, this is a run where we're we're potentially going to master our survivor card. Really prefer to make that the absolute top priority here. Um, let's throw this out. This could also be time eater. That's interesting. on that one. That turn. But now it is time. Forty nine block. All right. Well, I guess I'll stop there then, if you don't mind. Discard this. Keep all the rest. I regret my choice immediately. Good talk. Alright, that's a good intent. Once the writhing mass is doing something that you can block fully or otherwise negate, it's time to stop attacking them. Or else you shall suffer unnecessary curses for your hubris. Once you see the kill, go for it. Just take it. There's Skewer Plus. How about Eviscerate Plus, though? Cost less for each card discarded during our turn. Slaps pretty dang hard. Yes. I'll take it, Eviscerate. And I'm very happy to be fighting Reptomancer as the final elite here. Definitely less afraid of Time Eater now. Let's just use one of these poison potions. Actually, heck it. Use them both. I got stuff to do. Excellent. Uh, this first. Defend, defend, defend. All attack. 
Fluxamore. Great turn. Absolutely excellent turn. Just like this one. Easy. Pocket Watch. We play three or fewer cards during our turn. We'll draw three additional cards at the start of the next turn. That's also going to help us against Time Eater, should we run into them. I think another Prepared looks really nice. Two more draw, two more discard. And we are going to upgrade... Either Alchemize or Reflex. I think we want more energy still. Hard to come by. Lots of energy, you know. Awakened One should be a pretty easy boss overall. Hmm. Is this where I distilled Chaos? I want to cycle any potion. That's the best one to use right now. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm going to do it. Guess I should maybe make some room in hand first. We're gonna definitely play this. And this. Go! Hey, only one unplayable card. I'll take that, actually. That's pretty good. Regen Potion. Very good with double effect. I actually do want to play the Infinite Blades, even though it gives the boss strength, because it's also going to give us Kunai. Let's do that. 10 by 4 on turn 2. Well, guess what? I have a Piercing Whale. And you can't stop me. Need some actual block at some point here. Trouble. Not enough. Dang. <laughs> Can't even play the outmaneuver, which is a little spooky here. Prefer not to lose any more health, but we'll see what we can do. I actually don't want to play this right now. My main objective is to scale my dexterity stats. to not get hit for way too much. It's also my main goal. Here we go. Play the out maneuver. Now is a good time to play the second tools of the trade as well. Now we have energy, we have card draw. Sure, it's 13 by 4, but can that really stop me? The answer is no. No, it can't. Especially not if I choose to kill the bird this turn. It's even better. Like the draw pile as it is. Perfect. Now 
Now our blocks are so blocky that we're unstoppable. It's too much block, they'll say. And they'll be right. It is. It is, and it should be outlawed. Secretly upgraded Blade Dance. Easy. Draw anything yet? No? Maybe someday, Pocket Watch. Maybe someday. Twenty decks. And it is Time Eater. All right. Gotta put our money where our block is and use the accuracy to win. Let's see here. Good start. Definitely play this. Definitely play this. Definitely play this. This and this. Four more cards, huh? Blades, blades, gamble? Probably not, huh? Let's just gamble then. Forget the infinite blades for now. Terror, leg sweep, neutralize. Looks good. That's a good start. Power potion here. I think that I should. It seems like a reasonable choice. Double footwork looks very helpful here. Get us a head start on dexterity. Ghost in a jar. Too intangible. Okay. We're starting to form an idea of how we might win this run. And it looks pretty good. Blade dances yet? Not yet. Still do this though. The infinite blades in play. Flechette's damage. Not quite below half yet, though. It's not quite what I had in mind, but we've got ways to be creative here. Give me some more cards. 
That's more like it. Alright, Twitch chat, it's finally time. Pocket watch. Go. Let's do it this way. Let's be in a bit of an awkward spot for this turn, but not too awkward. Especially not with Piercing Whale. Easy peasy. take a bit of a hit here. My deck is filling with shivs. It's kind of spooky, actually. The goal is to play 12 cards when I can. Especially if I can gain dexterity while so doing. That is kind of spooky. Lock. Draw. Yikes. Although we can do the all at attack thing. Even better. Oh, wait, shoot. Well, that was a mistake. Hmm. That to myself. Ow. Hmm. Hey, the pocket watch gets to do stuff. No, it's okay. We have the regen potion. I'm not worried here. But yeah, that was a that was a that was a big big bad. That was uh, been live for six plus hours now, and we are not playing perfect anymore. Good news is, we're not going to die or anything. I'm not even going to have to use a potion. In fact, because we have the meal ticket, I'm pretty sure this is completely irrelevant. To us. Let's make sure we full block that. Easy peasy. Never had a problem at all. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt out the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of these misplays. Have I been here before? But yeah, we're going back to full health, so it's like it never happened at all. Let's upgrade our... Actually, we should upgrade our weakness. Let's upgrade the leg sweep. Mastered this run. Survivor, infinite blades, and tools of the trade are what stand to be mastered here. Ancient potion. Ancient potion wins it, I'm pretty sure. It's just a question of thorns pot or regen potion. Also by concentrate. Move auto attack. Yes. Well, no. I'm gonna remove a strike. Still. Definitely do want to remove a card. And yeah, we wanna we wanna buy this potion. 
because it goes with the speed potion. Six thorns, ten regen. How's our damage to hearts? Not that good. Really not that good. Okay, lose the regen potion. Deal. I'm actually willing to use the Ghost and Jar here if I feel like I need to. Hmm. Hmm. Certainly that's questionable. I'm gonna die first, I think. Yeah, go in a jar next turn. That seems fine. Seems fine to me. Um, so yeah, we do want to remove artifact from you for sure. Probably just want a piercing whale. Although I think I need the block block. Struggling to figure out how to who to do damage to here. It's certainly possible that next turn is just simply not bad enough to even force the. I guess let's do damage to spear first. Take a little bit here, but as soon as we use a potion, we'll get that health back. No, that's definitely a. Uh, that's definitely a ghost turn. And we'll get immunity next turn as well, which is just fine by me. Let's just play three cards. One, two, hmm, three. Eviscerate's also a pretty good third card. But no, we're gonna want more energy here. That seems fine. It's two artifact always the case for these enemies. Um, on Ascension... I think it happens on Ascension 18. Below Ascension 18, they only have one artifact. Each. Target Spear first here. And weaken Spear, as we're going to be attacked by Spear for a lot next turn. Let's get all of this in play now. Good. Get him, Plachettes. The power. All right, we're not going to break through that shield, so not much point. Let's just look for artifact removal and more decks. Both of those seem pretty good. For accuracy, we'd be really struggling to do damage here. There we go. Thirty-eight. 
you, huh? Oh, no, you don't. Seven skills. Benib! Our tenth attack is doubled in damage. We're offered three unupgraded common cards, like it's Act 1, right before we fight the heart. Tidio Quack, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Do I feel like the deck is lacking in any aspect? I would say, for the heart, this deck doesn't have quite enough damage, and not quite enough um, upfront block either. However, our potions are going to make up the shortcomings that the deck has. Uh, very significantly. We have six thorns off this thorns potion to help out with the damage very substantially. We have an ancient potion to block vulnerable from heart. We have a speed potion to get 10 dexterity along with the ancient potion as well. And we can apply 12 poison, which will do about 100 damage over the course of the fight as well. These are all really good things for us to have. We're okay taking Beat of Death here. We're going to drink several of these potions turn one, so just hit me. Hearts. It's pretty good damage, too. Play the outmaneuver. Ancient Potion. Speed Potion. Only takes one of the two artifact the potion gives, so we also block Vulnerable. Uh, and I guess we want poison sooner rather than later. Sure. Use that too. Alright, a good turn one. Okay. Probably want to play all the shivs this turn, which means we're going to take a bit of a beating. Oh, but a weak potion. What perfect timing. Six turns of weakness. Eat it, heart. Oh, perfect. Where this slimed. Play tools the trade. One more blade dance. Honestly, I think I need the health here. And the one energy. Let's just stop there. Know that each multi attack, the heart takes 90 damage in return. 90 damage from the Thorns Potion. Pretty absurd. This is not the hand we wanted, but even if we completely break the draw, we're okay, thanks to the defensive investments we've made so far. Kissing well, you're late. I was definitely meant to pen nib the eviscerate. Definitely meant to pen nib the eviscerate. Don't think it's going to make any difference, though. This fight is looking pretty dang over. I do say so myself. Pendib on nine. Let's try actually doing this correctly this time. Hmm. Which I think means just calculated gambling here. That feels right. Pen nibshib after all. It's fine. Play 
Maybe I'll maneuver, and I think just keep Ink Bottle for next turn. Seems good to me. Yeah, Sacred Bark really carrying this hard fight. Very much so. GG, Mr. Hart. You are very dead. <laughs> GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.